Okay, we are live. Right, we are live. Okay. Good morning, everybody. How would you get a chance to keep it turned up? How do we turn the or GoPro? Have some power. Yeah. Um, I'm going to now turn on the GoPro that's mounted on top of the camera. You are seeing me on. This guy took the uh, wireless. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Sorry, we've had uh, several different technical difficulties, but that's the way it works when you mix salt water with electronics. Nonetheless, it seems to all be working. I hope you're having a good morning so far. We're just about to get into the water. We've had one team of divers in the water already. While it looks nice out here, we only have maybe two to three foot seas, and the sun is out for the first time in, in several days. The current is up, which means we've got a strong current moving off of the island, heading out towards the back of the boat. So the dive is going to be a little bit more challenging than it has been in years past, but we're going to give it a go anyway. We're not sure right now where the fish are, so we're going to jump in the water and see if we can find the fish for you. When we get in the water, you'll notice that we have, once we get down to the bottom, there are many friendly fish that should be joining us as well, and you'll get a good chance to, to look at those as well. So uh, with that, I'm going to start getting my stuff on. Um, I'm asking my fins, and then we'll jump into the water. I sure can. Uh, if you guys can still hear me, and I hope you can, uh, diving with me today is Dr. Now, 
On the back of me, you'll notice a big black object. It's a thruster. It's a scooter that helps us go. So, I can use my scooter to move quickly around the site if I need to. No, this one's fine. Alright. Here we got a couple of friendly grouper right away. If you can see these here. These are these guys are always following us around the reef. Coming up close and checking us out. One of them has a tag. You can see. I think if Christy comes around, she can show you on this side. I'm putting out this tag here. Up. And you can see the tag there. There he is. So we tag fish at the site, and I think a lot of you heard me talking about it earlier. One of the reasons we do that is so that we can use those tags to estimate the total number of fish that are on the site. Uh, the current's a little stiff down here, guys. So, uh, we're going to do what we can. Keep talking to you. If you just give me a second. I'm going to try and do... Uh, here comes Lynn now. Excellent. Lynn, what you might be able to do, pull down a little bit, loop it around a coral head, and then we will just stay around here, okay? Excellent. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and see whether or not Todd can talk to me. Todd, can you go ahead and use the comp system to say something to me, see if I can hear you? Bryce, can you hear me? Sorry, Todd, go ahead again, please. Bryce, are you able to hear me? I am now. Okay, sorry, my, my comm system has fallen off of my ear before. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Uh, were you trying to talk to me earlier? No, I was not. Okay. Okay, so. Down here at the site, when the current is up like this, and you can see it is, because we've got, uh, here are some soft corals here. You can see how all the soft corals are being pulled this way. That's a quick and easy way to tell you that there's a lot of water moving past here. When that happens, all the fish hunker down onto the reef. So, you don't get to see the big clouds of fish that we normally do when the currents are like this. But you still get to see the friendly guys, like this one. He's going to show up and hang out with us during the whole dive. Letting us know he cares. Well, I say that, but of course, these guys really are wild animals. And the reason these guys are very friendly is likely because they've been... They're getting used to being fed. You're not supposed to feed these wild animals. And probably some of the time, the people aren't trying to feed them. But you know what? Grouper are really smart. Well, right now, hoping we'll scare up something like a squirrel fish, and they'll be able to eat, eat it. So they're smart animals, and they use us. They know that they're smart. But to us, it feels like they're just being friendly, and I like that they are. Uh, is there a cleaning station down there that we might see? There sure is, right here, actually. Let's show them. Uh, there's a big, fat female right there. Chrissy's pointing out to you. She's got a big, distended belly. Here's a fish that's in a cleaning station. 
No, you didn't. We just scared him out there. He didn't like it. Hey, Christy. <laughs> right here. Yeah. This is a cleaning station that it was hanging out in. And so, in here, you can't really see it. But there's tiny little gobies that are down in here. And those little gobies will pick parasites and bits of dead skin off of the grouper. Oh, there's one right now. That's all. Literally, that species is called a cleaning goby. And, and Bryce, what are they inside of there? There, uh, this is a, a barrel sponge. Barrel sponges are uh, they're pretty common out here on the dive site. They're common on deeper parts of the reef where there's a lot of water movement. I'm gonna see if I can find a spot to settle down in. Okay. I'll just show you that this is a friendly guy. Remember I said he was going to hang out with us the whole time. And there he is again. Alright, let me just check and see my dive buddies, alright? You okay, Lynn? Alright. Hey, Christy, are you okay? Okay. Let's see what else we can find. As we can just swallow the site here. Yeah, so I'm sorry if I didn't finish that thought. Those big barrel sponges are only common on deeper sites that tend to have a lot of water movement. Hey, Bryce. And they're actually animals. And they filter out particulate matter, bits of food that are in the water. They're microscopic. Hey, Bryce, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, we're hearing that when Christy's panning fast, it's making it very difficult for people to see. I'm not sure if there's a way for you to communicate. That. Okay. I'll let Christy know. Stay steady. Don't do this. Steady. Todd says. Okay. Alright, we'll see. It's hard. Current times like this, a lot of the fish are down on the reef, and when they get down into the reef, you'll see them using cleaning stations. This fish right here, probably pulling up to a cleaning station, so the gobies can be inside of sponges. But they can also be down on the little sand patch, just like this. Bryce, are you ready to take some questions? I sure am. Go ahead, Todd. John A., can you unmute yourself and we can take a question from you? I'm daydreaming. In. Do you have a question, Joshua? What is it? Yeah. How long does it take for one of the um, baby hatches from the egg to um, get to the size that it can be? Uh, a question here is how long does it take the grouper, the baby grouper, to get to a maturity that it will be able to spawn? Okay, the question is how long does it take the baby grouper to mature enough to be able to spawn? That's a great question. Uh, fish that get mature, somewhere between five and seven years of age. So it takes five years Thank you. take a long time for the population to recover. And of course we want that population to recover so that we have fish to catch into the future. 
And we've got lots of fish to see here on the healthy coral reefs in the Cayman Islands. All right, hold on one second while I uh, look for another question here. Okay, go ahead. Leonora, do you have another question from your class? Yes, Todd. Speak up loud and clear. Um, question? Yes, Aaron? What is the NASA grouper's main what? What are the NASA grouper's main predator? Hey. The question is, what are the NASA grouper's main predator? Oh, that's an easy one. The question is, what is the NASA grouper's main predator? And that's us. We are humans. Uh, when we fish them, we catch lots and lots of NASA grouper. Now, historically, about a hundred years ago, these guys were the most important fishery in the entire Caribbean. Nowadays, uh, that's not too hard because a lot of them left. The question, right? The question, so you don't forget it. Write it still. It's a little cave. That's a good thing. Besides us, uh, NASA grouper are eaten when they're big like this. How many really eggs do they Only by sharks. Big, big fish. Big sharks. And we'll see sharks out here from time to time at the spawning site. But when they're little, when they're little guys, they can be eaten by all kinds of things, like bar jacks or other grouper species, or most importantly, I think, lionfish. Hey, Bryce, so lion do you think you can point out the tag that's on that grouper and talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure can. Let's see here. We have there. another question, Tom. Hey, Leonora, can you hold on for one moment? Sure, will do. What is the target number that we're looking for for Nassau grouper? Like the population is, wise. What is the target number we are looking for for the Nassau grouper? Uh. When we 
we'd like to see is big, healthy populations that produce a big spawning aggregation every single year. That's ideal. In a lot of places, we don't have anything like that. Here in the Little Caymans, in Little Cayman, we do. Not necessarily on the other Cayman Islands, at least not yet. But we're getting there. Okay, Alexis, we can you do go know with your question? Once populations get below a certain size, they don't end up recovering, at least not quickly. Come this way. That's why it's important to protect these large aggregations, but they still exist. To make sure that there's many. Um, please be quiet. Jason, come over this way. Please. Okay. Todd, we're going to go ahead and sign off now. Uh, as we come up, maybe you can switch over to the dash cam. And okay. field a couple questions as we come up back to the boat, okay? Okay, sounds good. Okay. Why does the NASA group have to go to the surface? Hey, Tom? Can you hear me? Yes. Tom, are you there? I'm here, Bryce. What is it? Tom, can you hear me? I can hear you, Bryce. Okay, I'm going to disconnect the cables now, and I'd like you guys to pull them up quickly. Okay, he's disconnecting cables. Yes. Okay, can you guys hear me out there okay? Sir. We can hear you, Todd. We can hear you. Okay, excellent. So, Bri while Bryce is coming up topside, uh, we can take questions from you, and uh, Alexis is going to go first. Can you go ahead with your question, Alexis? Why does the NASA group go to the surface? She wants okay, to so the the question was why well, what was the answer to your question, Mark Anthony? There's really no target number, just what? The more, the better. Yes? Joshua? Okay, let's take a question from Leonora. Hey, Todd. Yes. Okay. I don't think Josh. We didn't hear the answer. Oh, we didn't hear. Okay, I'm gonna Leonora. Hold on, I'm gonna repeat the answer. So what you were seeing okay. was the grouper down on their aggregation site, about 90 feet below the surface. So they do not typically come to the surface. Okay. Okay, let's go with a question from Leonora. How many eggs does um, the NASA grouper have, and how many reach adultery? Adulthood. Adulthood. Okay, so the question was, how many uh, eggs do the NASA grouper lay, and uh, how many reach adulthood? Which is a great question. Um, the Nassau grouper take about eight years to grow old enough, uh, to mature enough to be able to go to the spawning site and spawn. Now, when they go, they lay thousands, hundreds of thousands of eggs. In fact, uh, Bryce says that when they're when they're spawn. <laughs> There's so many so that some of them will survive. Okay, we can take another question. Yes, they have to produce. 
Yes, each of each of those females will will produce hundreds of thousands of eggs. Okay, is this better for you guys hearing me? Okay. We can still hear you. Okay, next question. Okay, we have a question, Todd. Okay, go ahead with your question. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Why would I cut video? Is that helping, James? Hey. Okay. All right. Do go ahead with the oh, question. Okay. Is this a real person? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 She's not looking at me. Wait, okay. can you see it? Okay. We are waiting for the it's on okay, here. I'm going to wait for a question from Alexis. Yeah, you can hear her. Oh, it's not on that side. Can you hear us, Ty? Yeah, yes, I thought I might do this a bit. Do you remember, I don't know whether I mentioned last year, when um, scientists go to Little Cayman and they go and study the group population. Do you know about that? Yeah. Well, they're there now and they're transmitting live from them down there. So, um, she wants, she we're on here. Do you know what, 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 doing it to 11 o'clock. Uh, so, do you fancy watching it? Alexis, w one more time, please. Okay, she said she wants to know how long does it take a fertilized egg to become a baby Nassau Grupa? The question is how long does it take a fertilized egg to become a baby Nassau Grouper? Uh, and that's a great question. The eggs uh, are fertilized and it takes them about a month before they are what you would call a baby grouper. And then we'll find a spot back on Little Cayman uh, in the eelgrass close to shore uh, where they will you know, slowly eat and get older and, and bigger. And then after about a year, uh, they'll, start, they'll slowly move out further into the reef. Okay, and now um, I'm going to put Alexis on mute, and let's take a question from uh, Cayman Prep. Cayman Prep, do you have a question? Hey, Todd, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So the, ki the kids have just come in. So what do you want to ask him? Hazlo Espanol. No, no. Come on, we're doing this. Yes, please. What do you want to ask about the grouper? 
How many did they say? How many did they, did, How many group did you see? Do you think? Sorry, that was a little quick. It's there's a lot of current down there, so it's kind of hard to talk to you guys and make sure that everything's going okay. But um, had a great dive at the end, and I uh, was just wondering if there's any other questions I might be able to ask. Uh, and I've gotten done with the dive. Answer. Did I say? Ask? We have a question. How many? <laughs> How many fish do you think you saw this time? This time, uh, I think we only, uh, I'd say maybe 40 or 50. And I was saying earlier on the dive, uh, when there's a lot of current like this, uh, the fish tend to hunker down onto the reef. And when they do that, they're not up in that big, nice ball so that they're very easy to count. And so there's probably hundreds and maybe even over 1,000 fish down there. But we didn't see most of them because they're hunkered down on the reef where we can't see them. So we only got to see the fish that are right there next to us. Or the very friendly fish that come over to us and hang out with us. And you saw that on the dive. How long has it been for Grupa to go? Sorry, say that one more time, please. How long does it take for a grouper to grow? Ah, um, well, uh, when, they, when they settle out onto the reef, they're about that big. They're tiny, tiny, tiny. That's when they move from being larvae or dr drifting around in the ocean currents to settling down on our home reefs. Within one year, they've moved from about that small to about that big. So about, what is that? Maybe a, a third of a foot? About, about uh, maybe five to seven centimeters? And then they'll double that again in a year. So now you're starting to get to be a foot, foot and a half, maybe 20 centimeters. And within about three to four, uh, starting in about five years, they get reproductively active, and they're more like 30 centimeters. So they're getting to be, you know, be a pretty, pretty, pretty big sized fish at that point. And as I said before on the dive, okay, go on. Why does why does the man the man uh, let's take another question from Alexis. If you can hear us, Alexis, you can send us another question. Say loud. Okay, she wants to know why the male groupers follow the female groupers to the when they're releasing their eggs. Okay. Um, so when um, the males and the females all get together uh, at the spawning site, and when it comes to the time of, of gamete release, when the females are releasing their eggs, the males are all trying to be around that female to release their eggs so they can be the one to fertilize those eggs. If you're a male and you get to be the one to fertilize the eggs, that means half of those offspring or those eggs are your uh, sons and daughters. And so they're trying to make sons and daughters. Uh, the more eggs they can fertilize, the more likely it is they pass on their genetics and they can have more relatives on the home reef. And, uh, Alexis, we can take another question from you guys. <laughs> When baby groupers are born, what can do they eat? Can you repeat the question, please? When baby groupers are born, what do they eat? Ah, well, when they're very, when they're first born, do they repeat the question? Yes, the question is when baby groupers are born, what do they eat? So, um. Those eggs that are released out here, and remember before I said they're about the size of a pinhead, so they're very, very small. Within about two to three days, those eggs hatch into to baby fish, little larvae. And those larvae don't really look like adult grouper at all. They look very different. They've got lots of spikes on them and stuff. And, and there, those fish are really only eating other larvae, other things that are floating around out in the ocean
and that's where they have nice holes to, to um, have cover so that they can avoid getting eaten by other fish. Uh, but while they're there eating, they're eating lots of different things like little baby shrimp and crabs and maybe other tiny fish that are swimming by. So animals, they're eating mostly animals, but very, very small animals, at least at first. And that doesn't change. As they get bigger, they just tend to eat bigger and bigger animals. Smaller than them, usually, uh, but bigger and bigger other fish, crabs, crustaceans, lobster, uh, shrimp, all that sort of stuff. So they're, they're, um, they'll eat lots of different things. Okay, why don't you get up there and say hi. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Okay, uh, we'll take a question hi. from uh, Cayman Prep High School. They were going to ask how big can a grouper grow up to? Okay, we would like a question from Cayman Prep High School, please. Okay, how big can the groupers grow up to? Can you repeat the question? So the question is, how big do NASA grouper get? What's the maximum size? What's the biggest one that's ever been found? Uh, typically the largest grouper on, on uh, the, the, the reef here, or the aggregation that we've seen here, is about 90 to 100 centimeters. So that's about... Oh, get that, did we? My head came in prep. What do you have? Do you have one, Nathan? Someone put a hand up. Okay, I just asked that. Hey, guys, before we get another question, what I wanted to do, so um, you're mainly seeing what happens in front of the camera, but what I wanted to do is show you all the stuff that's going on out here behind the camera so you get a sense of what we're doing out here and get a feel for all the equipment that we're using in order to stream back to you guys in the classroom. So bear with me a second. I'm going to switch this over. I'm going to put it on this screen right here. It's not plugged in. Okay. Just give me two seconds. Okay. All right. You see me now, right? Here I am. on the boat. So now I'm on the boat, and I'm, I'm using the camera that we were using underwater. So this, I'm holding the camera that Christy was holding underwater. I'm going to show you what we've been talking to you on. Here's our computer, okay? And we were using the, the webcam that's up here to talk to you just now. This computer is hooked into our comm system right here. It's this big thing with lots and lots of wires all poking out of it. So the, the, the cable that I'm using is this yellow cord, and that connects to our camera, connects into this comm system, and that connects into our uh, computer. And that's how we broadcast to you. Here's Todd. And all of these yellow cords here are in this bucket out here. Here's Neil. Neil's yeah. captain for the day for us. It's also his birthday, so happy birthday to Neil. And then the, the bucket cord gets fed over the side of the boat and paid out down to us. Christy here was the one who was holding the camera and pointing it at us. And then we have Lynn, who, uh, right over here. Hey, hi, Lynn. Lynn's a graduate student at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography. In That's Michigan. Lynn. She's a graduate student at Scripps. Right. I don't know if you can hear all of that, but that's... That's uh, all of the equipment that we're using to stream out video for you guys up there. Okay, so uh, let's take another question from Alexis. Alexis is All right. Why? Why? 
Why don't the Nassau Kuba take care of their ch baby? Yeah, it cut out. Okay, we're not hearing the question from Alexis. Hello. You have to take off the mic. Alexis, perhaps you can type the question into the chat group. Except you guys need to be on the next question, not next door. Okay, uh, I see a school whose name is showing up as John A. Do you guys have a question for us? Um, how long is the Cooper's lifespan? Say that one more time. How long is the grouper's lifespan? Okay, so the question was, how long is the grouper's lifespan? Yeah. Uh, Nassau grouper can live up to 30 years, maybe a little bit more than that. That's the oldest fish that has been caught on the spawning aggregation here on the west end. It's very common for Nassau grouper to live 15 or 17 years. And so there are fair. And as I was saying before. It's important that they're managed well. I took it down now, you're up. Ah. It's important that they're managed well because if you fish out a population that has a long lived animal like that, it takes a long time for them to recover. Okay, we can take another question from you. Uh, we can take another question from you. Okay, let's see. Why is it so important to save the natural groupers? Say that one more time, please. Why is it so important to save the Nassau groupers? Ah, why is it important to save the Nassau groupers? Well, there's a couple of different reasons why. Uh, one is because uh, people like to catch them and people like to eat them. So it's important that we keep them around on the reefs so that they're a useful fishery. We can keep catching them into the future. The other reason is people also like to see a Nassau grouper on the home reefs. When you're a diver going out and you're, you're diving or you're snorkeling on Caribbean reefs, it's really nice to be able to see a big, healthy, and friendly grouper out there. That's a fly. It makes that reef seem that much I have a question, more sir. Reliable. How much so making sure we have healthy NASA grouper populations means that we're going to have healthy reefs into the future as well. Okay, um, Alexis, do you want to try to do your question again? Alexis? Okay, so, uh, yeah, we did not hear the question. So, Alexis, if you want to type it in, that would work for us. Okay, and while we wait for that, John A., John let's, we can take another question from you. John Gray. John Gray. Um, how long does a group of weight? Ah, here we go. How, the question is, how much does a group of weigh? Uh, most of the, the fish out here weigh, uh, in terms of gram, uh, so for the, for the big ones, we're getting more like 40 to 50 pounds, and the really, truly monsters will be a little bit more than that. <laughs> We take another question if you have one. We have one over hey, at John, John Gray. We have two actually. A couple. Okay. We're trying to narrow right them down. Oh. In, Come on, Kyle. In inches, what is the common size of a mature Nassau grouper? <laughs> Did you hear us? Or 36, though. So how about uh, 36 to 40 inches? 
36 inches. Okay. That's a big one. Okay. And the other question, come quickly. The other question has to do with how many times? Her, come, speak up. How does the group like keep the color reef alive? So, uh, question. the question is, how does the Nassau grouper keep the coral reef alive? Nassau grouper are one of the top, they're at the top of the food chain of the food web that's in a coral reef. And they really are important to help keeping the whole ecosystem in balance. If you start to take away your top predators, then your, everything else kind of goes out of whack in a coral reef, and then everything from the the smaller fishes and the herbivorous fishes to the the corals and the the plants that are living down there, the algaes, all get out of whack. So they're really an important structuring species. They're at the top. So they help maintain that important balance. They are important. They're maintaining the important balance. It's a very fragile balance that's maintained to keep a coral reef exactly as it's supposed to be. Thank you. Kyle, I have a question really quick, but I think one other. Uh, we, they want to know in the Cayman Marine Park regulations uh, booklet, uh, when you're permitted to fish the grouper, it gives you like a standard size, about 12 inches or so. They wanted to know if that's a mature grouper. Like, you know, should we really fish him that size or should we wait till he's bigger? When, the question is, I think. Um, when, what's the size when they become mature, when they start coming to the aggregation for the first time? So, yeah, uh, not exactly. It, like when we're actually fishing them, yeah. uh, the specified size is 12 inches. We want to know, you know, is that a spawning size or should we leave them in the water to grow to spawning size? Or should yeah. we, you know, the regulations say you yeah. can fish them that size when you're permitted to. We just right. want to know, this, this, students want to know if we should just leave them in the water and not fish them then and wait till they're bigger. Got it, got it. A 12 inch fish, 12 inch Nassau grouper is not reproductive size. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, I would say a 12 inch grouper is probably a three year old fish. Uh, it's got another couple of years before it gets to reproductive size. Really, probably two to three more years. Uh, and then so a 30 centimeter fish, so a fish that's about that mm, yeah about that big, that's gonna be reproductive size. So that's what that's more like uh, 20 inches. Okay, we have a question. Why don't NASA people like other groupers to come in their area? Mm. The question Robin is, why do NASA groupers like other groupers to come into their area? So when it's not spawning time, they don't really like other grouper in their area. They are territorial, which means that if other grouper come near them, they chase them away. They keep a little spot on the reef that's their home spot, and they defend it from other Nassau grouper. They chase other ones away. So they don't like it at normally. They're normally solitary and territorial. But during spawning time, they all leave their home spot and come to this special place out on the west end of Little Cayman and some other places to all get together because it makes it easier for them to make new baby Nassau grouper if they're all together in one spot. It's too hard to find each other when they're out on their own little home spots. They're too spread out because they're territorial. All right, that was an excellent Bye. question. We can, take, Bye. we can take one more question. How much pounds do groupers weigh when they're first born? How many pounds does a grouper weigh when it's first born was the question. So when they're first born, they're tiny because they are floating around in the in the plankton. So they're basically the size of plankton. They're not may you know maybe this the a uh, pinky fingernail in the first couple of days. And then by the time that they've floated around in the plankton for a while and then they settle and they get back to a coral reef spot, which is a cup a month and a half later they're maybe less than an inch, so they're still really small. 
and then they'll stay there for about a year in near shore before they come out onto the coral reef. And by the time they they're they're able to be seen, they're maybe about that big. So they're you know just a few pounds when they're first cruising around on the reef. So when they're first born, you know how light a feather is. Well, they're much lighter than that. They're teeny tiny. Um, Todd, could we ask a question, please? Yes, go ahead, Kevin. We're, we're going to take a question from Kevin's class at Spot Bay. Go ahead, Kevin. Go <coughs> How fast? How fast can they swim? Well, they're not very good fast swimmers. They're, that's not their their body type isn't really meant for them to swim fast for long distances. I don't, Bryce, do you know if there's a... Yeah, Christy's absolutely right. So uh, fish that swim fast, like wahoo or sailfish, they can swim upwards of 50 miles per hour and sustain for short bursts. Grouper can't do anything like that. And the reason why is because they're ambush predators. So they're really good at hanging out and being camouflaged down on the reef. And when they see something they want to eat, they can sneak up on it, kind of like a lion. And, and if they get close enough to it, they have uh, a mechanism in their mouth called gape and suck. So they open up their mouth really, really fast, very, very fast. And that causes suction in their mouth, and they suck the fish into their mouth by opening their mouth very fast. Todd, we typed one last question from John Gray. Thank you very much for answering. To be about 30 years old at their oldest. They start coming to the spawning aggregation when they're six to eight years old. So that's, you know, about 20 to 25 years, maybe, of spawning if they live their whole maximum life. Uh, and, and sometimes they'll spawn two or three winter moons, sometimes only one winter moon a year. It depends on how the conditions are for the fish. But that's also that's a really neat question because they do spawn a lot as adults, so they'll, they'll spawn many years in a row. So like Christy said, maybe uh, your average fish spawns 50, over 15 years, and that's really important for this long-lived species because uh, we can go years and years without seeing very many baby grouper at all on the home reefs here. So uh, about two years ago there was a huge amount of baby grouper everywhere on the home reefs. But before that and all the five years previous we hadn't found a single one. And so uh, because of the ocean currents and what's going on sometimes all those baby Nassau grouper can get sailed away and none of them will come back. And every once in a while we'll have a really big year where lots of ju juvenile grouper show up. And when you have that kind of reproduction when you can't be guaranteed to have babies that arrive and make it every year, it's important that you spawn over many, many years so that at least once or twice you have a good year and some of your babies return home to the Cayman Islands. Uh, just a quick question here from Spotby. Okay, go ahead, Spot Bay. Yes, uh, just to clear up um, a slight misunderstanding here. Is it okay to fish for the grouper, or there is a total ban on it? Is it okay to fish for the grouper, or or keep the bans on it? Was that the question? Yeah, all the ban because based on that earlier question that was asked. Okay. It's like it's okay to fish. Right. Okay. So here in the Cayman Islands, currently. Uh, you're not allowed to fish the idea is that we protect them during that critical period of time when they're releasing gametes and if, if we do that well there should be fish on the home reefs for people to catch throughout the year just letting them do their thing and reproduce at the aggregation sites during that critical period of time during the winter months when they go there to spawn. Is the question whether or not it's a good idea to fish Nassau grouper or were you asking about the regulations? 
Well, I'll answer the I'll answer the is it a good idea to fish Nassau grouper? I I think part of the reason why the Cayman Islands has these protections. The main reason why the Cayman Islands and all of the islands throughout the Caribbean have these protections in, is in place is in order to recover Nassau grouper as a fishery so that we can have both healthy coral reefs because we have lots of grouper around, but we also have lots of grouper to catch in the future. And right now we don't have that except for in very few places in the Caribbean. So the first order of business is to protect the species so we can recover the population so we can have a fishery into the future. All right. Uh, we'd like to thank everybody for joining us for today's webcast. I have a question. No, we are all out of time for right now. We're going to have to wrap things up. Um, thank you to everybody for joining us. Let's get Christy and Bryce in here to say goodbye to everybody. Bye. Right, thank you all Bye. for joining us. We had a great time. Bye. Bye. And if you have more questions, please. If you have more questions, uh, will there be a session tomorrow?